Hey guys, it's the Honest Youth Pastor, and today I want to talk to you about abiding in Jesus and what that looks like. Let's get into it. So in John chapter 15, starting at verse 1, Jesus specifically deals with this abiding in him and what that looks like. Let's read John chapter 15, verse 1. It says this, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, take, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the words that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So there's two things here I'd like to really deal with. The first one is what does it look like to abide in Jesus? And the second thing is what he specifically says that I want to deal with in verse 4, where he says that you cannot bear fruit unless you abide in me. So the first thing that we need to address is what does abide mean? What does abiding in Jesus mean? And this, I think, from the text speaks to always being in this place of prayer, this connection, this pursuit, this following after who Jesus is, who he said he was, and how we are being transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit to be more like him. So the question I would ask you is, are you in prayer daily? Are you in the Bible daily? Are you seeking a community within the body of Christ to grow and to be sharpened uh, in a daily or weekly fashion so that uh, you, you can be called out on your sins, so that you can be uh, always in this, this constant mindset of, I want to be uh, who Jesus wants me to be, to pursue him how I need to pursue him, and to tell others about who he is. This is this abiding, this connection of a daily connection with who our Savior is. Now, the second part is what he says in verse 4, is which we cannot bear fruit unless we are connected to him. See, lots of times people say, well, you don't have to be a Christian to do good things. There are organizations that are, that are apart from Christianity that may even be against Christianity that do good things. They feed the homeless. They help those that need help. They're a voice for the voiceless. And I would say you're totally right. Those people are doing, uh, are, are doing things for people that would be classified as good. What Jesus is speaking here about is that you cannot bear fruit unless you're connected to him. He's speaking of eternal fruit, things that go far beyond the need now that go into eternity. Because here's the thing. I think Christians and churches should definitely be meeting the needs of people now. Churches should be the first ones feeding the homeless. Churches should be the first ones being the voice for the voiceless. Churches and Christians should be the ones on the front lines helping those that need help. But there should be this extra step here that the church goes into that we're, we're also that we're concerned about their immediate needs now. We're concerned eternally for their soul. And this is what Jesus is speaking about here is that you cannot bear fruit apart from him. He's saying that there's this eternal fruit that you're not going to bear if you're not connected to him. So all the homeless that you feed, all the hungry that you, uh, that you feed, all the naked people that you clothe, all those good things are great and good, but they're temporary. So yes, we should, as Christians, be doing those things, but we should also have this mindset that we want to do not only earthly fruit, but eternal fruit for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the question I would say is this, are we firstly involved in abiding in Him? Are we pursuing Him in word, prayer, devotion, community? And as we're being transformed by all of those things, we should be being pushed out and being really, really uh, you know, drawn into this, this call of uh, providing this earthly fruit that also turns into this eternal fruit. So in short, I would say this, are you abiding in Christ? And is that abiding in Christ pushing you and drawing you into a place of service to serve people in their earthly needs now so that you can also have conversations about eternal needs and what that looks like too? Are you abiding in Christ and is he abiding in you? Hey guys, thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for participating in the comment sections and following along and just listening to the videos. Uh, if you're interested in conversation starting apparel such as this shirt here, this Abide shirt, honestly one of my favorite shirts and designs from ODG Apparel, head over to odgapparel.com today. See, the whole point of behind ODG Apparel is to start conversations, to have people say, hey, what does that shirt mean? What does that design mean? And then it opens up this conversation where you can say, well, this particular shirt Abide is, that 
in the scriptures, Jesus tells me that I should be bearing fruit, but I can only uh, bear fruit, which would be good works. I can only do good works if I'm connected to him. And I guarantee you at some point in that conversation, somebody will say, well, you know, non-believers, people that don't believe in Jesus also do good things. And then it enters into this conversation about what we just talked about, where you can say, yeah, but Christians, as a Christian, I believe that there is earthly fruit and then there's eternal fruit. And I want to meet both of those needs. So if you're interested in conversation starting apparel, such as this shirt or another shirt over at odgapparel.com, go check them out. If you see some designs you like, something that catches your eye, something that really interests you, go ahead and purchase that. But when you do, make sure you use the discount code HONEST10 so you can get 10% off your total order. So the more you buy, the the more you save and hopefully the more conversations you have. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.